There's no boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. There's no boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. So you should never tell your, your children that, oh, it's okay, oh, it's cute. Oh, that's your girlfriend down the street. Oh, that little girlfriend and boy. No. Because that's how you get raised up to be a whoremonger, to sleep around with anybody with that boyfriend and girlfriend stuff. The Bible is all about marriage. And we are here to restore the households of our people. You said we were kings and what else you said? Kings and queens at one point. But we were actually kings and princesses. That term queen was not ordained by God. That term queen is from your oppressors because they want you to believe that women are on the same level as you, but they're not. There's only one form of kings on the earth and that's the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American men on the earth. Those are the only ones that's supposed to be ruling. But what happened to us? Give me Hosea 4. What's your name, brother? You say, uh, Trav and Richard? Got you. Okay, so he said we're supposed to be kings, but something happened to us. We rejected something from God, and he punished us out of our kingship. Let's see what happened. Read. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When you say something, when you say that's my shoes, right? Can somebody else say, no, those are mine? Can somebody else say that? They, could, they might like them. They might uh, covet them. They might want to wear them, but guess what? Those are yours. So God said, my people, which is a possessive, possessive word, my people. Read that again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So God said his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. What's knowledge according to the Bible? It says a what? Food of thought. Food of thought? What you say knowledge is? According to the Bible. Okay. Right. It's the laws of God. We're going to prove that. You got to prove it with the Bible. Read that. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So these pastors are supposed to be seeking the laws of God. They're supposed to learn the laws and teach them to you. But they don't teach you the laws of God because all they want is money. That's all they want is gain from our people. But the Bible says that knowledge is the laws. Go back to Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. So remember what that knowledge is, right? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So God said his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Look at the community. Our people are in a destroyed state. We live in the worst conditions of society. We sell drugs to each other. We fight with each other. We leave a woman to raise a child by herself. That's a curse in society. And we have to bring that thing out because as a man, it should be more than you just laying down with that sister. Raise a household as a man. Right. Teach them God's laws. Right. Be a better example to these young men and women to raise up to. Right. Don't leave a woman to take care of a child by themselves. That's why we have a lot of homosexuality in the community because the fathers left the home. And don't take care of responsibility. And a lot of men don't want to hear that, but guess what, we're going to talk about it anyway. Because right. it's God's laws right. to be responsible. Read. Because thou has rejected knowledge. You rejected knowledge. You reject your responsibilities as a man. That's why we remain in this condition today. And our women reject responsibilities as well. Right. We both have to take responsibility for our actions right. and be tired of oppression and show action that we love God so he can save us out of captivity. Read. I will also reject thee. Guess what? Aren't we rejected? Look at us. This is rejection from God. God rejected us because we broke his commandments. And in that rejection, we live in the ghettos, the slums of society. Somebody could knock on the door right now and from DSS and say that you are abusing your child and take them away from you and you can't do nothing about it. That is slavery. That's captivity. You don't have any power to do anything. Read. That thou shall be no priest to me. That you should be what? That thou shall be no priest to me. So God rejected us and the men are no longer priests. What does that mean? Give me Exodus 19, 6. What does it mean we're no longer priests? Because we might take that as a light thing. Like, okay, I'm not teaching in the church. That's something light. I'm not a priest. So what? What does that mean? You know? They're just saying that we refuse 
We refuse to live by law. So let's see what that means. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6. And he shall bear to me a kingdom of priests. So we are supposed to be a kingdom of priests. So if he said you're no, no more priest to me, that means you're not getting in the kingdom. We are living in the white man's kingdom right now. Everything we do benefits him, benefits his society, benefits the uh, Africans, benefits the, the uh, uh, Arabs. Right. We are the lowest people in society. And we are no longer priests. This is his kingdom, read. And the holy nation, these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So we speak in these words to you to let you know you're supposed to be priests. You're supposed to be kings. But you drop your responsibility. You reject what God says. You don't want to keep his laws. You don't want to fix yourself up and repent and keep the commandments of God. So now we've been brought back to a lower state. Let's see what else is wrong with our people. Give me uh, Hosea 4 and 1. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. He's, he's only speaking to the children of Israel. God only cares about the children of Israel, which are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Nobody else. Read. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So God said he has a controversy with us. What's a controversy? When you have a controversy, with a problem, right? God said he got a problem with our people. Let's see what the problem is. Read. Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. God said there's no truth, no mercy, no knowledge in the land. We're not keeping God's laws. There's no knowledge in the land. We got our women dressing like whores. We got our men sleeping with any woman, not marrying a sister, having a baby, leave her, leave her for her own responsibilities. She do the same thing over again, find another man, sleep with him, get pregnant, get left by the nigga, sleep with another man, get left by him, sleep with another man, get left by him, leaving the same example for their daughters to follow. And that's the pattern we follow over and over and over again. And a lot of us are guilty of that thing, but we have to repent and change. We have to repent and change. Because we, if not, we're going to stay in a low condition. We're going to stay in a low state. That's what's wrong with society. Read. Verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. It says no mercy. We have no mercy for one another. Because I guarantee you this. I don't know you from a can of paint. But if somebody was to walk up and step on your shoe, it'd probably be a fight out here. Am I lying? <laughs> There's no mercy in the land. We don't have no mercy for each other. We fight each other, shoot each other, kill each other at an alarming rate, and then say black lives matter. Black lives matter. But we don't march against black on black crime. We don't care about black on black crime. One sister said, we family, it's okay to kill each other. One sister said it's okay because we're family. No, that's a curse upon our people. Right. The other nations kill us because that's what they're supposed to do. Right. They know you're supposed to be gods on this earth. Yeah. They know you're kings on this earth. They know you're the princesses of God. They're supposed to kill you. You're supposed to gather with your people and fight against them by keeping God's laws. Not a physical fight because we're not going to win it. That NFAC group, they're not going to win no fight. What happens when they run out of bullets? Where are they going to go? They're going to go to the enemy. They bought the weapons from the enemy, and guess what? They bought bigger uh, weapons. We out here with little pistols and firearms and stuff. They got lasers that could, that could blow up this whole society right now from the sky. What can you do against that? You can't do nothing against that. We cannot fight our enemies physically. We got to come back to God's laws, statutes, and commandments and get saved from this captivity. And the only person that can do that is Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. Read. By swearing and lying and killing. By swearing, by lying, and by killing. This is why God has a problem with us. We swear. We lie. Oh, I love God. I'll do anything. Meanwhile, we'll kill the same people that come from the same conditions as us. We'll steal from our brother. We'll sell drugs to our brother and have him looking confused in society. We don't care about each other. Our actions show it in society. Read. And stealing and committing adultery. Stealing and committing adultery. That is a huge problem in the black community. Committing adultery, sleeping with another man's wife, sleeping with anybody outside of marriage, and not considering the consequences and the responsibilities after that. Because what if y'all have a child? 
The men, most of the time, they just leave. And society pushes that. Society does not want the men in the household. That's why when you try to get food stamps, for example, the man can't be in the household. The man cannot be in the household for you to get help from society. If you want WIC, which was a program was started by us, by the Black Panthers, they will not help you if that black man is in the household because they know he's the greatest thing to that family. And you have to separate him to keep that family in the bottom condition. Read. They break out and blood touches blood. They break out and blood touches blood. We kill each other at an alarming rate. What do you think the number one uh, way we kill our people is? From, the, from, from years ago, what do you think the number one way we kill our people are? Say it again. Lack of knowledge. What's the, I want to say, how, what's the quickest way for a black man or a black woman to die? Yeah, the fastest way. You say you don't know? I'm, 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 I'm sure y'all don't know because you have to think on a spiritual level. The number one way we kill each other is through abortions. Abortions is the number one way we kill our own people. From the 1960s alone, we have murdered over 20 million of our own people through abortions. And they push that, they fund that. Why do most of our women have abortions? I'm gonna ask you. I wanna see if you're gonna keep it real. Why do most of our women have abortions? They know they can't take care of them, right? Are they supposed to be taking care of the house? Give me First Timothy 5 and 8. You said no. Who's supposed to take care of the house? The man do, right? Do we take care of our house? Right. So in the result of us not doing so, what happens? They get abortions. Right. Or she step up to the plate and struggle every single day. And our men are okay with that. Our men are okay with that. Ah, uh, I ain't like it anyway. I got my rocks off. Yeah, she pregnant, whatever. We don't get along, though. No. You ain't think about that before y'all got together? Before y'all slept with each other? No, because we are irresponsible breeders. We are irresponsible breeders as men and women. And we have to, we have to follow a better way. Read that. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. But if any provide not for his own. So if a man don't provide for his own. Especially for those of his own house. Especially for those of your own house. If you don't provide for them. He has denied the faith. You did what? He has denied the faith. You don't believe in God. You do not believe in God if you don't provide for your own. Read. And it's worse than the infidel. And you're worse than the other nations. You're worse than the heathens. Because you don't provide for your own people. And I know that's tough. That's tough to take on that responsibility. And that's the reason why a lot of people don't want to follow this truth. Because we teach marriage. We teach marriage. Give me Exodus 22. This scripture is a scripture that a lot of our men hate. And a lot of our women do too, believe it or not. Because it shows commitment. But it's in the Bible. This is what's going to change us. Read. Exodus 22 verse 16. If a man entice a maid. So it says, if a man entice a maid. What is a maid? What's your name, brother? JD. So in a sense, one definition is a person that cleans. But a maid is also someone who has a maritable age, but not married yet. That's a maid. So she's single. So if a man, read that again. And if a man entice a maid. If a man entice a maid, like, oh, what's going on? What's, what's good with you, shorty? You know, you, know, you know how it go. Spit the lingo to her, right? Try to get her attention, because you know what's on your mind, right? Try and get your rocks off. Read. That is not betrothal. So if you entice a woman that's not engaged to another man, right? And lie with her. And have sex with that woman. Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Bible says if you lay down with that woman, you got to endow her. What does endow mean? You got to engage to marry her. If you want to lie down with that woman. Read it again. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Does that sound like it's optional? Is that an option? It says he shall surely, shall and surely, twice in case you missed it, you have to marry that sister. You have to marry that sister. But our men don't want to do that. They want to get their rocks off, have sex with the sister, protected or unprotected, and then she come back with the stick. So I got something to show you. 
You sitting down, you sweating. You, done, you probably done been here before. You see that stick? Ah. Now you start having all kind of problems. Start praying now. Last night you felt good. Leaned over to her afterwards, gave a little kiss on the forehead. Yes. You ain't know. You ain't know what the, what the responsibility was behind that. Now reality set in. Now you're trying to find an escape route. That's not what men do. And that's why we out here today, to make y'all better men. To make y'all better men, because y'all got to be better examples. And a lot of us are guilty of that. Don't get me wrong. A lot of us came from that same lifestyle. But guess what we did? Give me Acts 3 and 19. We did something that we're telling y'all y'all have to do today, which is change, which is repent. But in order to repent, you have to know, you have to follow something. You can't just say, uh, I'm not going to do it anymore. But you got to show actions to change your life now. Let's see what the Bible says. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent, you therefore, and be converted. The Bible says, repent and be converted. What does converted mean? You switch over, you change over, right? What converts us? How do we change? Give me that. Psalms 19. How do we, con how do we change? How do we convert? You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. Let's see what you need. Read. Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So God's laws is perfect because it can change you out of any lifestyle. It can change you from being a gangbanger, from being a homosexual, from being a deadbeat dad, from being a whoremonger. It can change you. The Bible can. Read. Converting the soul. Converting the soul, meaning you have to change because the Bible will teach you how to change. Read. The, the testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of God is sure. This Bible is a sure thing. Read. Making wise the simple. After you repent and learn the laws of God, it's going to make you wise. Now you're going to be looked at different in society. You're going to be respected in society because you respect your sister. You're not just going to look at a sister because you got a big butt and a smile. Got big breasts. She turned up at the club. She know how to make it clap. You're going to look at her because she got morals. She dressed like a woman. She has a dress on. She know how to cook. She know how to clean. She know how to take care of a child. That's the kind of woman you should want. But you got to fix yourself first. Those kind of women don't come easy. Drop to the 6 and verse, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So if you want to get a friend, you have to prove them first. There's no boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. There's no boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. So you should never tell your, your children that, oh, it's okay, oh, it's cute. Oh, that's your girlfriend down the street. Oh, that little girlfriend and boy. No. Because that's how you get raised up to be a whoremonger, to sleep around with anybody with that boyfriend and girlfriend stuff. The Bible is all about marriage. And we are here to restore the households of our people. Give me Leviticus 19, 17. But the reason why we don't follow that is because we have no love for one another. We don't have any kind of love for each other. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. You know, it's a poor, it's a sad thing for you to have to tell a person don't hate their brother. That's a shame. Isn't that something that should be natural to not hate your brother? But the Bible says our people are rebellious and hard headed. So much that we got to tell them not to hate their brother, their son, their father, their mother. Read. Thou shalt any wise. Rebuke thy neighbor. You have to correct your neighbor because we see you falling off. We have to correct our people and say, nah, you're not supposed to be selling drugs, bro. Nah, you can't, you, you're not supposed to be turned up at the club, bro. It's a Sabbath day. You're not supposed to be turned up at the club at all. Sis, nah, you're not supposed to have your, your breast out. You're not supposed to have your behind showing. We have to correct our people, and that's love according to the Bible. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. And not suffer sin upon him. Because you have people that, again, like I said, Look at us and laugh, right? Like the brother, whatever he was laughing at. You got people that laugh like, oh, man, you, you listen to that shit? You trying to change, nigga? That's what is in my our people's mind. That's crazy. You trying to be better, bro? You crazy. You weak. What kind of sense does that make? That makes absolutely no sense. But our people look at that as a shame. Like, bro, now nah, I'm, I'm going to be the realest nigga in the hood, you know? I got knocked out last week, but I'm going to be the realest, though. I'm going to get there. All I got to do is sell more drugs, find the right plug, and I'm in there. Our people are crazy. As, they bugged out. Bugged out of their minds. Read. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So the Bible says we're not supposed to hate our people, right? We're supposed to correct them. You heard that, right? 
Give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Because we can't stand by and see our people going into sin and not say nothing, right? We got to warn them because that's love according to the Bible. So the Bible has everything in it. The Bible will let you know what you can do and what you can't do. And we're going to give you one commandment according to the scriptures that you can't do. Give me that. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. So God said you are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. Read. And that the spirit of God dwelt in you. And that the spirit of God is supposed to dwell in you. But the spirit don't always dwell in us. Why? Let's see. If any man defiles the temple of God. It says if any man defiles the temple of God. How do we defile our temple? Sin? What is, how, do, how do you defile it? What do you put into your body that defiles it? You know what I'm going into. What are you doing right now? What you doing? Huh? You doing something else. What are, what are you doing? You smoking. You thought I wasn't going to point that out? That's what we're here for. To warn our people. You are defiling your temple with that cigarette. Right. Why would you put a cigarette into your body, the greatest body on the earth, and mess it up? And, and, and cause yourself to potentially have cancer, have lung problems in the future. We don't think about it because it's, it's further down the line. We don't think we ever going, we're going to be good. We're young. You know, our body going to be good. I smoke it, I feel good. No, this is what's supposed to make you feel good when you follow God's commandments. This is where you get peace from. If you've loved God, you should chuck that thing away and never smoke it again, bro. That stuff is going to kill you. It's killing you slowly. That's all it is. We think that because we're not judged on the spot, we don't smoke it and then go and then die. We think just because it's not immediately that we okay. But that judgment is going to come. Over time, you start coughing. You cough a little bit. And a lot of our people smoke something else and cough even more. Oh, that's good right there. Over time, 20, 30, 40, then all of a sudden, you in the hospital. You got cancer. Oh, man, what did I do wrong? I quit yesterday. I just quit. Now you got a few, a few months to live. We used to scream black power while heroin was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.